That's right everyone, we are back with another 100 days of Stardew Valley Mega Modded goodness. There will be more adventures, a heartwarming love story, more panning, and meat plants? Which means if you haven't seen the first 100 and 200 days videos, then be sure to go watch them so you're all caught up. Or don't, if you're crazy like that. These videos do take me ages to make, so if you like what you see, then liking the video and subscribing to the channel is a great help. At this point, we are so close to 100,000 subscribers so if you could help me out that would be amazing but without further ado fix yourself up a bag of popcorn and let's get into the video it's day 201 here on mega modded farm there's a light snowfall today and it's refreshing to be back in the valley even if my little toesies have frozen over again it had been a while since i had last been on the farm so i quickly got myself back up to speed with a quick ride around the farm on my loyal steed dusty with the addition of so many npcs it was to no one surprised that today was someone's birthday. Belair's to be exact. So I handed her a cup, which she seemed to love. With that out of the way, I spent some time back on the farm picking fruits and vegetables off some of my trees in my orchard, before deciding to escape the cold wintry weather in the valley for the wet dreary weather over on Ginger Island. I found a lone artifact spot on the beach which I was praying hit a snake spine for me to dig up, but alas it was not meant to be. For context, I need two of them for Professor Snail's museum. Anyway, I continued around the beach to Mr. Key's walnut room, but he wouldn't let me in, telling me I needed to find nine more walnuts to be worthy. So with nothing much left to do, I made my way back to the valley that evening where I spent some quality time with my own brain planning stuff and collecting another batch of ancient fruit wine, which I surprisingly did not ship off, instead opting to store it away for the next market day. And with that, my first day back on the farm was over. So let's move on to day 202 already. I started today picking a greenhouse clean of prosperous ancient fruit, which I of course shoved into my kegs located up in grandpa's shed. As I was leaving the farm this morning I got a quick kiwi cutscene in which he seemed curious about my farm. I'm not too sure what that was about but let's just hope he doesn't want to do to me what he almost did to Carmen at the end of the last video. Dusty and I enjoyed the views from the cable car as we ascended the mountain to Ridgeside where in town I helped Blair scare the living daylights out of care here. Remarkably it wasn't anyone's birthday today so I decided to treat Dusty to an adventure in the Ridge Forest where I found a whole prismatic shard just chilling on the ground. If Geo asks about a missing shard, you saw nothing. I was here in fact to find a hidden waterfall for a quest I'd picked up during the last 100 days. And quite honestly, it didn't take too long for me to find it. Back down in the valley that afternoon, I popped by the museum to drop off some glass shards, planted a bunch of mahogany trees outside of my fruit cave, and fluffed around until night time. As tonight was going to be my chance to finally meet the seer. Now this is a very long cutscene, so let me shorten it up a little bit. This is Belinda. She is the seer I've heard so much about, and she is in pursuit of cleansing the mountain of corruption by finding and opening a portal to the spirit realm. So Bliss, Dyer, and Geo all appeared with artifacts to use alongside the relics that I've been collecting in hopes that Belinda can open a portal to the spirit world. She then miraculously gets it open, but then it suddenly closes and everyone's like, what? Then Belinda has a screaming match with a voice that we can't see, super unproblematic, I'm sure she's fine in the head, and I'm told to meet them again at a later time. Oh, now that was a lot of exposition, which honestly left me with a lot more questions than answers. But as the kids say these days, I just can't right now, so I headed to bed. Luckily it was the market day on day 203, so I was able to take my overwhelmed self to the markets and sell wine all day long. Honestly, I could use a bottle myself, but I needed those sweet profit margins, so I held myself back and spent the majority of the day watching the people of the valley spend their hard-earned money on overpriced items. I also took a quick break to give Caroline a birthday present, and as the closed signs appeared on the market stalls, I had amassed a staggering 321,474 gold in the span of one day. I still had quite a lot of wine left over, so I dumped the rest into my shipping bin. I was tempted to run over to Maeve's to rub it in her face, but I'm a man of humble origins, so instead I just decided to dream about how awesome I am. I woke up on day 204 with the honour of being able to call myself the best market in the world. 
Who knew selling the same thing over and over again could get me such a prestigious title? Riding on a high, I picked some winter forageables that had grown in my crop fields alongside some mint leaves. I then used those forageables to make more winter seeds which I replanted down in my fields. But today was an important day as it was the festival of ice, and for those who have seen the first 100 days, they know exactly a year ago today, this happened. And carved up at the ice fishing competition. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. So you bet it was time for payback. But first I had to watch Tort making snow angels in the snow because oh. god isn't he just the best? Don't you think he's the best ever? I think he's the best ever. You better think he's the best ever. What was I talking about? Oh yeah, revenge. I went to work reeling in fish after fish after fish and you bet your sweet tushies I was crowned the winner. Day 205 started with a fresh morning ride with Dusty down to Sophia's place, so I could purchase a few iridium sprinklers and nozzles to put on said sprinklers. Unfortunately, you can only buy three at a time, but why was I buying them, you may ask? Well, I want to fill up my island farm with ancient fruit soon, and buying them is way easier than spending my precious iridium bars on crafting them. And why am I outside the Adventurers Guild? God, you're full of questions. But I'll tell you, it was so I could pick up the Slime Charmer ring. Inside I found Freddy, who it seemed was an ex-guild member. I was eager to discuss this further with Freddy, but then this happened. So, uh, yeah, yeah, quickly moving on. Obviously, that afternoon I found myself on Ginger Island making a start on setting up my new sprinkler system. Lucky me found an artifact spot by the river, and then, I kid you not, this happened. <laughs> I don't think I was that mad. I was, I definitely was. But time creeped up on me and before I knew it, it was getting dark. So I scurried away to the forge on the volcano caldera to infuse my burglar's ring with my newly acquired slime charmer ring, which I was very pleased about. And I made my way back to the valley and finally home for the night. After purchasing some more sprinklers and nozzles from Sophia and a pile of deluxe speed growth from Piers, it was back to the island on day 206, where I added another three sprinklers to the farm and planted down every taro tuber that I had with a sprinkle of that wonderful speed grow. You see, I'd picked up Caroline's Island Ingredient special quest the other day, which tasked me to grow and ship off a hundred taro roots, which is, surprisingly, a lot of taro. So I thought that would make a good start towards getting it done. And on my way back home, I found Sebastian lazing around the beach, so I dropped off a void egg for his birthday. Back on the farm that evening, I thought I'd spend a bit of time crafting and messing around with a few new machines. It was refreshing to wake up to actual crops ready for harvest on day 207, rather than just bland old winter seeds. So I'm happy to say I picked some elderberries this morning. I paid Ridgeside a quick visit too, where I found Kia here tucked away inside out of the cold and handed him a clam for his special day. Back down in the valley, I cleared the beach of all its forageables and purchased a few trapper bobbers from Willie's shop. That's because I was going fishing. I wanted to make a start on catching the legendary fish, so I thought I'd make a start with the glacier fish. Now, believe it or not, after 200 days, I still hadn't reached level 10 fishing. My disappointment is immeasurable. I know, I know, it was the last skill I hadn't perfected. Which, as a Stardew Valley veteran, has got to be some sort of crime. So I thought it'd be best to get comfy and continue fishing away the day since I was pretty close anyway. And by the time the stars had come out, I caught the last fish of the day that leveled me up to level 10. I'd fish my heart out today, which showed as I had to make another chest to fit them all into the kitchen. It's day 208 and I started my day mooching around the farm, gathering some oak resin, using my new machines to make some more artisan goods, and paying a visit to the museum, where I saw Kiwi enjoying some picture books, and donated another artifact to Gunther's collection. Afterwards I popped by Sophia's again to purchase more sprinklers and nozzles, and sailed on over to the island. My island farm was looking pretty close to being ready for an ungodly amount of ancient fruit once I had added another three sprinklers to the mix. But the day was quickly coming to an end, so I returned home to collect up another batch of ancient fruit wine, which I could now ship off seeing as I didn't have to keep it for any more market days. And after a quick examination of my ancient fruit in grandpa's shed to see how long they had left, I got some sleep. I was ready for a house upgrade on day 209. 
and chopping down some of the grown mahogany trees gave me enough hardwood to make those wishes come true. I was so ready that I almost forgot to pick my ancient fruit, which I didn't. But it does sound very much like something I would do. I got my house upgrade from Robin shortly after, which I was very excited about, and paid Sophia's place another visit to buy some more sprinklers and nozzles. This is the last time, I swear, I'm going cold turkey. Because back on Ginger Island, I dabbled around with the layout and was able to optimize it, having four sprinklers all the way across. I told you there would be an ungodly amount of ancient fruit. Content with how it was all looking, I returned to the valley where I no joke stumbled across Andrea again. This time she had shapeshifted into a box by the bus stop. Can anyone else see this or is it just me? Do people think I'm just talking to a box? Like what? I, just, I don't get it. Hysteria aside, I found myself back at Ridgeside that night where I saw Irene and Zane getting their nervous flirt on. I found Richard having to deal with a rude customer at the Log Cabin Hotel, and I met June, who's going to be the resident musician at the hotel during fall and winter seasons from now on. I was here to finally check out the space that Naomi had opened up alongside Richard, and I got to see the new cafe and event space behind it. I can't wait to put on Ridgeside Village's first productions of Grease the Musical starring me as Danny and Pam as Sandy. Moving straight on to day 210, I started my day trying to get into Pierre's, but when I found it wasn't open yet, I tried to get back on Dusty and I, I just had the worst time. Note to self, don't park your horse close to a market store. This is, ugh. And insult to injury, it doesn't even matter because he's taking the day off like he always does. It was Harvey's birthday today, so I stood not so creepily outside his bedroom waiting for him so I could give him a bottle of truffle oil. It was back to Ridgeside soon afterwards so I could clean out Pika's shop of all of his recipes before finding Belinda, Bliss, Dyer, and Geo up at the ridge. In order to proceed with any more portal openings, she needed me, who has inherited the blessing of the harvest, to appease the crystals scattered across the mountain. How do you appease these crystals? Crystals? Well, you hand over items of the same colour to that crystal. And checking through my journal, there was quite a few crystals to appease. So I started small, back home I gathered some red items and tested it out on the first crystal closest to the entrance. So far so good it seems. So I did a bigger trip this time, gathered up every single coloured item that I needed from my chests on the farm, made my way back to the mountain, and got to appeasing some crystals. Oh, and don't mind me slaying this big old dragon thing, it's nothing for a monster slayer like me. After starting with the grey crystal, I moved on to the purple crystal and handed over my items. Next was the blue crystal, then the green crystal, just below that was the yellow crystal, and finally I ended with the orange crystal. The mountain then spoke to me saying I've got it from here and to come back tomorrow where we'll finally meet. Am I going to meet the mountain? Either way, I had enough running and putting my life in danger for Belinda the Seer today so I headed back home for the night who was at my door the morning of day 211 but bliss. She congratulated me on completing my tasks and told me that the seer will be waiting for me at the ridge from 8pm. Sounds intriguing. But that was a while away and I had some elderberries, juniper berries and winter forageables to pick. And after turning them all back into seeds and replanting them down on the ground, I gathered up my seed makers from the top of Grandpa's shed and headed to Ginger Island. My taro had finished growing and I got to pick them all from the side of the river, only to turn them all back into tubers with my seed makers. However, disaster struck when I accidentally smacked down my growing mango tree. I had no idea you could destroy a growing tree by hoeing it. And safe to say, I was pretty sad. But by the end of the day, I managed to plant all of the taro, so that's some good news at least. From one end of the valley to the other, I managed to race Dusty up to the ridge just in time to meet with Belinda. She worked her sorcery and as dazzling as it was, she disappeared in search of the mountain spirit. So we followed her to the west part of the ridge. We came across a beautiful lake with waterfalls everywhere. And it's here that we were introduced to Ray Rila- Ray- Ray Rila- Ray Rila- Ray Rila- Yala. You know what? That name is too hard to say all the time. I'm just gonna call it the Mountain Spirit or Ray. So it turns out that Ray and Belinda are in love. Aww. More importantly, she explained that the corruption around the ridge has been caused by an evil entity called Gabriella. Long story short, they need someone to go into the spirit realm to stop her. Belinda can't go because she was once corrupt herself and fears that if she goes again she may turn evil. So of course it's up to me to stop her. And for that to happen we need to open the portal with even more powerful relics from around the ridge. Oh and also my grandmother died to save the valley from Gabriella's corruption too, so hey I guess it's time for some vengeance. It was a lot to take in so I headed home ready for a good night's sleep. 
I woke to a bigger house on day 212. Did that happen overnight or... Eh, you know what? It doesn't matter. I was back to Rouge side this morning as I had a couple of gifts to give out. Firstly, one to Blair as she is the marriage candidate you all voted for in the poll I put out not so long ago. I promise I won't go rogue this time. And one to Louis for his birthday. While I was there, Maeve showed her first sign of kindness to me by offering me the chance to take out a bank loan for half a million gold. And if I do, they'll deduct 10% of my shipped goods until I pay it back in one full lump sum. Thanks, am I right? <coughs> it's a weird gift that I think I'll never use, but I think I'm starting to thaw away at Maeve's cold heart. Back down in the valley that afternoon, I met with Alicia at the Adventurer's Guild before heading to Ginger Island. And you'll be excited I did because it's time to bring back this video's first episode of Panning with Poxio. I laid down the rules in the last video, but in case you need a refresher, I try my luck panning in the dig site river for an elusive ring called the Lucky Ring, which grants the player a plus one luck bonus. Unfortunately, because I started later in the day and not to mention it was a bad luck day, I wasn't able to pan one up. But that's okay because on day 213, I stayed for some more panning with Poxio! We absolutely turned the game on its head today because despite the rain, I was able to pan up my first lucky ring of the season. So I added it to my lucky ring counter. Wait a minute, what's this? Did we just pan up a second ring in one day? I think we did! Let's add it to the counter. Man, it would be crazy if we got three in one day- <gasps> Yes, that's right, people. We got three in one day. Count them three in one day. I have a hunch that my New Year's resolutions were heard last year because that was just downright insane. Riding that buzz onto day 214, I started my day paying a visit to Freddy so I can hand him a leak for his birthday. That was before returning to Ginger Island for the day to delve into the depths of the Volcano Dungeon. I was mainly here for cinder shards, but if I happened to come across a golden walnut or two or some dragon teeth, then hey, I wasn't going to be too mad either. I spent the majority of the day here until it started to get late, so I passed by the island farmhouse to unlock the warp tower with my walnuts which will take me right back home. Albeit leaving Dusty outside Willie's shop, but I'm sure he'll be fine, right? My inkling was right and Dusty had made it back home to me on day 215, and after picking some more elderberries and juniper berries from my crop fields, I used my nexus to warp myself to the Adventurer's Guild, where I gave Marlin a birthday gift. I then spent some time back on the farm setting up my slime hutch. The poor building's been sitting there for a while looking pretty useless, so I thought it'd be better to get it up and running. I gave it the usual makeover, all there was to add was the incubators, but that would have to wait as next on my to-do list was to buy a shed from Robins. When you're about to grow as much ancient fruit as I am, you need somewhere to kick it all, and sheds make the perfect storage, so you'll be seeing a few of these pop up soon. As for the rest of the day, well I did check up on my taro on the island farm, bought a ridiculous amount of deluxe speed growth from Piers, installed three incubators into my slime hutch, and shipped off another batch of ancient fruit wine all before calling it in for the night. Day 216 was all about the ancient fruits. Now that I had both the greenhouse and grandpa shed producing fruit, I was in a good position to start planting them on my island farm. Of course I couldn't miss Granny Evelyn's birthday though, so I made a quick detour to hand her a gift. And then I raced off to Ginger Island. For the rest of the day I cycled between hoeing and watering the dirt, turning the ancient fruit I had into seeds with my seed makers, and making sure every spot had a sprinkle of deluxe speed grow. It was a very long day of hard labour under the island sun. I had filled up about two thirds of the farm. I honestly thought I'd get this done today, but it was going to be a pretty big job. As day 217 rolled around, I continued to work away, finishing up what I couldn't get done yesterday. Turns out I didn't have enough fruit to fill out the whole farm anyway, but we were pretty close, so that would have to be finished off next week. Speaking of finished, my taro roots were ready for picking, so I got to harvest them from the riverside. Although I had made the unfortunate realisation that I only had 92 taro to ship away. I'd picked enough to meet Caroline's criteria, but you also need to ship 100 of it. So I had to make a quick detour home, pick up some taro tuber I had lying around, and plant some more down back on the island farm. I still had enough time to grow them, let's just hope I don't forget about them. As evening fell, I managed to find Pika browsing the market stalls to hand him a birthday 
birthday gift before collecting the fruits and vegetables of my labour from the orchard. I even found it so peaceful that I thought it'd be nice for Dusty and I to chill out there for a while before bed. My field, bountiful of winter forageables, was a wonderful sight to wake up to on day 218. You know how this works, I'll just skip to the part where I'm planting them all down again. I found my way to Ginger Island this morning with my lucky ring in hand, and that was so I could infuse it with my iridium band up at the forge. My day just kept on getting better as Mr. Key decided I was deemed worthy enough to enter his infamous walnut room. Here is where I can pick up quest which rewards key gems which I can use to buy rare and powerful items. But I wasn't interested in all of that nonsense, no I wanted another shed. But I was disappointed to find Robin was in fact not working today. When it dawned on me that today was community day. Ah, oh, stupid community day. I don't want to work because I want to hang out with people to celebrate the community center and not let Poxy get any of his work done. Sorry, I, I don't know what came over me then. Anyway, with buying a shed out of the question, I just spent the rest of the night with Dusty doing our classic fluffing around the farm shenanigans. Day 219 began with a morning ride to Aurora Vineyard, for two reasons. One, to give apples a star fruit because he's adorable, let's not deny facts here. And two, to conjure up another warp point to add to my nexus, which went very successfully may I add. However, upon return to the forest I stumbled my way into Sprite Spring. I got into a conversation with two forest sprites named Klaus and Angelica, who claimed this area of the forest is magically protected so no one can find it. Feeling very special, I crossed the spring where I found flowers blooming on the other side. As explained by Klaus and Angelica, they're seasonal flowers. I even found a secret cave under the waterfall and picked up some goodies from inside. I thought I'd make good use of my time here and fished up a meteor carp and a golden fish to take them off the fishing collection. All before finding Leah in her home to hand her some goat's cheese for her birthday. Before bed that night I incubated a few slime eggs in the slime hutch and vowed to give my animals more hay tomorrow. Leah visited the farm on day 220. I think the birthday gift was so good that she decided to make me a sculpture for it. This morning had me running around doing some admin work. I made my way back to Sprite Spring so I could conjure up another warp point for myself, purchased some hay from Marnie just like I had promised yesterday, commissioned another shed to be built courtesy of Robin, and I even put my trash can in for a copper upgrade. 800 hours of Stardew Valley and I think this may be the very first time I've ever upgraded my trash can. As for the afternoon, well I thought I'd have a bit of fun creating some more machines. And realising that I had quite a few machines left to make, I thought a good idea would be to relocate my normal machines to a new spot opposite the silo, which I finished up as night came. Oh, and I added a path to it. Come on, I'm no savage. Day 221 started with an odd experience. Picking Iridium. Never thought I'd say those two words together, but here we are. Being close to the turn of the seasons, I noticed the animal area was lacking on grass, so I filled it in with some more, before heading into town for this year's Feast of the Winter Star. My person this year was Jody, so of course I handed her over a nice diamond. My secret gift giver was Lola. Let's see what I got. Let me see, let me see. Well, it could be worse. Could also be a lot better. Just when I thought my day was over, I got a surprise visit that night from our friend Camilla, who it seems just kidnapped me from my own doorstep. We arrived at my nexus and after having a cheeky go at how her nexus was better than mine, she said we had some important business to attend to, and she teleported us once again. Suddenly we were atop a tower in the middle of a desert that stretched out in front of us for miles. I quickly found out that we were in the Crimson Badlands, home to hordes of monsters, lightning, sandstorms, and void zones. So I made one of my signature warp points in case I wanted to come back. I don't, by the way. And I was returned home soon after. You'd think with all of these new places, the highlands, the mountain ridge, the crimson badlands, that maybe one of them would be filled with nice things like candy and lucky rings and gold. But no, of course they're not. They're filled with monsters and horrible things. Before I get carried away, let's move on to day 222. I had a couple of birthday gifts to hand out this morning, but before I could do that I offered to lend a helping hand to Pika since the staff were running late. And at the Heaps convenience store, Shanice, Kiara and I had Lorenzo on about Shanice being pregnant. I was here in fact to hand Shanice a birthday gift. However, my other present had to be taken back down into the valley. And I actually don't know how I missed this. It's Clint's birthday and I ride straight past him. In what world could I have been in to miss that? Either way, he eventually got his gift. 
I was a bit lost as to how to spend the rest of my day, but I did eventually pick up my fishing rod and head out to catch some fish to add to my collection, which included the mutant carp legendary fish, a radioactive bass, a water grub, and a slime jack. There was another joint birthday on day 223, and with my weekly ancient fruit ready for another harvest, today was really going to test my time management skills. So I began by wandering through my greenhouse and grandpa's shed picking all of the ancient fruit before dealing with the birthdays, and dropping off a fairy roast to Sophia, and a ridge wild apple to Irene. Quick sidetrack, I saw Louie playing with Kia here and Trini outside. Not that it was intentional, but I think it's sweet. Anyway, back to business. My next stop was the island farm where I finished off planting down all of the ancient fruit in batches, as I wanted to keep as much as I could for winemaking. Speaking of, the last thing I did before bed that night was exactly that. And here we are on day 224, the final day of winter. The morning was spent on chores like picking some berries from my crop fields, intruding on Shero's sleep schedule with a birthday gift, picking up my copper trash can and getting a steel upgrade for it straight afterwards, and commissioning a big shed upgrade for one of my newly constructed sheds. Back on the farm I utilised the rest of my day for decorating my orchard. Now that all of the trees had grown I could lay out paths and grass without fear of stunting tree growth. And there certainly won't be any more to buy later on, isn't that right? It took up the whole afternoon, but once evening fell the orchard was taking shape quite nicely, and I was very happy with how it was looking. It wouldn't be the final day of winter without the Ember of Resolutions festival now would it? Just like last year I put my piece of wood down and watched the bonfire come to light with everyone, praying that everyone's eyebrows stay attached, and also praying that I didn't just use all of my lucky ring luck on that one day. Before we head into year 3 though, Grandpa had to come and visit me in my slumber to tell me how proud he is of me. Aww. Now go away because I'm scared of go- I'm feeling jumpy cause there's a spring in my step. It's day 225, the first day of a new season and of my third year in the valley. Once I'd finished cleaning up the farm a wee bit, I celebrated this momentous day by visiting Grandpa's shrine and collecting the Statue of Perfection. Only if you look really closely. This statue will give me between 2-8 to eight iridium daily, so I stuck it right beside my front door. Speaking of momentous occasions, it's our favourite tortoise's birthday today, and my god you bet I came prepared. On my way to him I stumbled across Andrea rocking that Louis Vuitton box look. I was pleased to say that Tort loved my birthday gift. And I'm glad I got to make up for last year's disaster. Back in the valley I circled by Piers to buy some blue jazz seeds, which I used to plant by my beehives for some funky fresh honey. Then before I knew it I was off to Ginger Island. Now that I have a farm full of ancient fruit it's going to be essential that I visit often to make sure the weeds aren't ruining my crops. And we all know I have a great memory and I never get distracted. Over in Mr Key's walnut room I picked up the 4 precious stones quest before returning home for the night, where not a lot happened to be honest. They say to start off your day with some positivity, so that's what I did on day 226, by saying hello to all of my animal friends. On my way to Ridgeside this morning I bumped into a very suspicious looking trash can. Up in the village I helped Tort pick up all of his rubbish from his habitat and handed Blair a present. Like I said in the last video, Matchmaker Poxiel says if you give someone the same gift over and over again, they have no choice but to fall in love with you. Results may vary. Back down in the valley, Clint had finished upgrading my trash can, so I said do it again, but make it gold. Afterwards I was heading up to Robin's where I had a run in with Linus, who decided he wanted to let me in on a little secret. It turns out that he was born into wealth and was a very 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 rich guy at some point in time. But he decided he'd like to live a life of simplicity surrounded by nature. And you know what? I respect that. After hearing the news that Linus gave up millions of gold to live a simple life, I spent 20,000 of my own to get a big shit upgrade. So that I can make wine which will make me millions. Seems ironic. As morning turned to afternoon I paid a visit to the oasis shop in the desert to buy some rhubarb seeds which I planted down in my crop fields. I'll use the rest of it I promise, I'm just waiting for the egg festival to buy strawberry seeds. I then went and picked a new season's worth of fruit and flowers and vegetables from the orchard before deciding to get an early night's sleep. Magnus paid the farm a visit the morning of day 227. He was here to let me know that a new student was arriving soon called Morgan to join the rest of our wizarding folk, and I definitely won't forget to meet them for the rest of the month. 
I set today aside to put on my metaphorical chef's hat because unfortunately I, I don't own one. To knuckle down in the kitchen and do some cooking. The cooking collections tab is outrageously long so I thought I'd make a start slowly but surely ticking off some recipes from the collections. And uh, yeah, that's about all I did all day. You could say that day 228 started out with me doing some donuts on Dusty in the town square. And to that I would say, you're right. I wish you weren't, but I was waiting to get into Jody's house because I had a gift to hand Kent for his birthday. Afterwards I popped by the blacksmith where Clint had finished upgrading my trash can. So I said do it again, but make it iridium. You'll notice I've come away with quite the haul of copper, iron and coal. Well that my friends is for kegs. So for the rest of day 228 I just smelted ores. Day 229, I just smelted ores. And also bought this really cool bug net from Piers. Now I can go around and catch butterflies, which I think is super cool. And I also gave Alyssa a birthday gift and caught more butterflies and smelted ores all day and made 137 kegs, which I used to fill up a whole shed and collected up another batch of ancient fruit wine, but I passed down on the way to ship them off like I'm about to right now. <gasps> which must mean we're on to day 230. After collecting another harvest of ancient fruit, I shoved them all into the kegs, and even got to use my newly appointed keg shed with leftover fruit. Over in town, Clint had finished my iridium trash can, and now I can say for the first time in my Stardew Valley career, I have an iridium trash can. Down at the beach, I overheard a conversation between Kent and Ezekiel, and discovered that Ezekiel used to be in the military too, and was giving Kent some reassuring words that everything would be alright, which I think is a lovely thing. I was on my way back to the island, and after getting distracted catching some butterflies, I handed Key four prismatic shards, completing the quest I had picked up at the start of the week. In return, I got 40 key gems, which I traded for the key to the town and the heavy tapper crafting recipe. Can I get a whoop whoop for not having to wait outside? In the rain anymore. Well before I left I found a hungry gorilla who was willing to take a banana and return for some golden walnuts. That evening I happened upon Bliss at the hike trail who left me with some creepy words ringing in my ear. Quote, if you wish to save a soul return here at midnight. What is it with the people in the cult of the lady with the red tail and obnoxious cryptic messages? I thought about it for a while but by the time I was done thinking it was already close to midnight so I made my way back to the so called lost soul. The entity called out to me, stay. I don't want to be alone, and then all of a sudden, it went dark. And I woke up on day 231. Whatever happened to me last night put me to sleep, and luckily I ended up back in my own bed. Ah oh well, back to it I guess. It was Lewis's birthday today, so I surprised him with a hot pepper. Afterwards I thought I'd spend some time on the other side of the market stalls today, and do some shopping. I saw this super cute propeller hat that I wanted to get for Dusty, but of course being Jazz's stall you have to pay in ice creams. So I backed Dusty into the stand and got myself four ice creams, and by the time I got back, it was gone. I was literally gone for 10 seconds. Whoever took Dusty's hat, just know, I will find you and I will kill <laughs> Instead I had to settle for a party hat. Not as cool, but he still looks handsome. That afternoon I checked up on my slimes to see how my hutch was progressing and picked some flowers at Sprite Spring before returning to the hike trail greenhouse because I was certainly after some answers as to what happened last night. Luckily Bliss was waiting for me outside the cursed greenhouse. She told me I wasn't in any danger but that the greenhouse was stuck in limbo between the spirit realm and the physical realm. I was still curious but she said no more questions and to return here at midnight. Well who am I to argue with magical beings? Dusty and I took a breather over overlooking the valley for a while to pass the time. With midnight fast approaching I headed back to the greenhouse and headed on inside. The trapped spirit explained to me that they had failed to complete a challenge and if I finished their tasks then the soul would be set free. I looked at what I had to accomplish and it wasn't too bad, 25 mountain mist blooms, 10 sweet gem berries and 5 rubies. However it was getting late so the task would have to wait for another day. I took my first trip out to the Crimson Badlands on day 232, not to go exploring as such, just to give Lance a bottle of aged blue moon wine I'd picked up yesterday for his birthday. Then I was off on a boat ride across the sea to Ginger Island. This was so I could whack the weeds away from my precious ancient fruit and pick up another special quest from the Keymeister himself. That afternoon I found myself up at Ridgeside for a special occasion. You might remember from the last 200 days that Lenny had asked Alyssa to sing in front of the town, and that day was 
was finally here. The turnout was great and as you can see the crowd was loving it. As for the rest of the day I just wanted to see if I could find one of those 9 relics I needed to open Belinda and Ray's spirit realm portal. So I quickly scoured the book in Geo's hut to get an idea of what I was looking for. Yet my efforts came up short and I wasn't able to find not one relic today. So I headed to bed that night a little disappointed. Day 233 is a new day however, and it began with a visit from Marlin, who asked me to drop by the guild to discuss something. Before I could go and discover what that juicy piece of gossip could be, I had to totally not creepily wait outside Anton's door to hand him a birthday gift, which he didn't seem to mind. And downstairs in the store we found out that Anton was Lorenzo's brother, who seems to be quite the alcoholic and rubs Lorenzo the wrong way quite often. I also saw Shanice help Trini reach something for the top shelf, and I concluded that I have a sneaky feeling that Shanice wants one of her own. But that's not my business to get involved in, so instead I made my way to the Adventurers Guild. I met with Marlin, who told me Lance has an outpost in the Highlands, and his boat could take me there. But it wouldn't be that simple, oh no no no. Marlin wanted me to give him monster parts in return for the boat service. Who knows what a grown man wants with 300 monster parts, but you all know by now I'm not one to argue. Back home I collected everything Marlin had asked for, and in no time at all I was back at the guild handing it all over to him. Now I'll we wait I guess. In the meantime I paid the Junimo village a visit to purchase a few rare seeds, picked some produce from my orchard and bought a ridiculous amount of recipes from the saloon. And I mean a ridiculous amount, there must have been at least 50 recipes just sitting there for me, but at least my cooking collections tab was looking a bit more full. Continuing straight on to day 234, Marlin was back at my door to say the monster parts were satisfactory and the boat was ready for me. Let's go on an adventure. We rode the boat past gushing waterfalls and serene gullies where we ended up docking at the highlands. We met with Lance outside of his post and we headed inside to discuss matters. His research had told him that the monsters around the highlands drop crop seeds, so it was my task to collect these seeds and grow them and report back to Lance. So out I went into the highlands. I found my way to what looked to be the start of a mountain pathway, and sure enough the further up I went the more confident I felt. Just ignore the void over there, I don't know what happened about that. I found my way to the top and battled it out with a very beefy dinosaur. Eventually I came out on top and took my loot back down the mountain, where I came across a lake with lots and lots of monsters to slay. Eventually the monster numbers ran low and I had some time to fish in the lake where I caught myself a dagger fish. The adventure continues on to day 235 though. I noticed a large cave entrance yesterday as I was climbing the hill and that's exactly where I was heading. Inside the cave was filled with ores and equally so, monsters. Ultimately after some time I managed to make my way to the end of the cave where I found a lone dwarf who seemed to be trapped between a rock and a hard place. Get it? Cause he's in a cage in a cave trapped between a rock and a hard place. Oh come on, that was, that was a good one. Well luckily I did have the key already with me thanks to yesterday's slaying of the dino and I was able to set him free. To make use of the rest of the day I thought I shouldn't let all of this good ore go to waste and mined as much of it as I possibly could before passing out inside the cave in the early hours of the morning. It was back to reality on day 236. I had adventured myself out so it was quite nice to indulge in regular day to day things again, such as giving Ezekiel a birthday gift and starting the mysterious Mr. Key questline, which requires you to insert a battery into this power box, put a rainbow shell into this box by the railroad, put 10 beets into Lewis's fridge, oh wait, there's a rhubarb, not beets. Oh, come on Boxy, we'll get it together. I took myself out to the desert to buy some beet seeds, which I ended up planting on Ginger Island alongside 10 sweet gem berries, and one of each monster crop seed I had gathered from my highland exploring. On my way home that night, I found Blair to hand her another cup before gathering up my ancient fruit wine, dumping it all into the shipping bin, and getting some sleep. Day 237 happened, yeah sure I got to re keg all of my ancient fruit, and yeah sure I finally got to buy my strawberry seeds from the egg festival, and yes I participated in the egg hunt which went really bad this year and I ended up losing to Abigail, but no I don't want to talk about it, I'm boycotting all future egg hunts, anyway here's me planting my strawberries before bed, okay let's just move on already, come on let's go move on. I had a couple of birthday gifts to give out this morning. I even found Maeve by the cable car and she gave me praise for how I was doing. Well, looks like someone had a change of heart. And I had an incredibly difficult time trying to get Haley's present to her. I accidentally gave out two coconuts to other people. Stupid market day. But we got there, eventually. 
Then it was back to smelting ores for the rest of the day. It's day 239, and after blessing Olivia with a gift for her special day, I thought I'd try my hand at exploring the Crimson Badlands. Truth be told, I shouldn't have, but here we go anyway. I met with Alicia and Isaac before heading out, and Isaac gave me one look at the map before snatching it away and leaving me to it. So with the map fresh in my mind, I headed out into the hellscape that is the Crimson Badlands. Instead of exploring though, I opted to do a bit of fishing, because what fun is there in a way Land except fishing. Heading west, I began racking up an army of red serpents. I like to think of them as such because it's less scary than them trying to kill me. As I hit the western canyon wall, I turned around and whipped my sword out to send them all to the shadow realm. But with more coming, I retreated into the canyon, where, of course, I had to keep fighting for my life. In an unfortunate turn of events, I thought I had this mummy on the ropes until it hit me once with the power of a hundred freight trains and I died. <coughs> Luckily Camilla was there to save me, and I ran home with my tail between my legs. To make up for the disaster that was yesterday, I thought I'd spend day 240 back on Ginger Island for another episode of Panning with Poxio. It was going to be hard to follow the absolute madness that came before, and today was very evident of that. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to pan one up, but we did get a bunch of other goodies instead. For the next couple of days, I geared up and attacked the Skull Caverns head on in an attempt to knock off some more monster slayer goals. So over days 241 and 242, I went diving through the caverns, carpet bombing each level, slaying mummies, and slaying serpents, and the iridium that came with it was a lovely bonus. Important moments happened outside of the caverns too. I gave Philip a birthday gift, as well as Naomi, I helped Shiro cook a fried egg for Yuma, and I couldn't forget about Pam's birthday as well. I was rewarded for my hard efforts on day 242 as I completed both the Pepper X Monster Slayer goal and the Mummy Monster Slayer goal too. I took a break from the caverns on day 243 and spent the morning catching up on some neglected chores around the farm. I then paid Robin a visit to purchase piles upon piles of wood and spent the day smelting ores again. Sometimes Stardew Valley requires a day or two for the boring things and that's okay. Plus, after all the time I'd spent in the Skull Caverns, I had ores coming out of my ears, so I thought I might as well make good use of it. It all paid off later that night when I could place down 120 kegs into my other keg shed. And being a Friday night, I had a batch of ancient fruit wine to collect up and ship off before sleepy times. Which meant on day 244, it was back to picking fruit from the ancient times. But today was exciting because of the simple fact that I had a crop of ancient fruit ripe and ready to be picked on Ginger Island. It shouldn't be a surprise to anyone that I filled up all of my kegs afterwards and still had a mountain of fruit left over, which I shipped off for some extra cash. That afternoon, I popped into town to drop off a birthday present to Shane before returning to the farm and working on my soon-to-be obelisk area. I've had the idea for a while now to have this grassy area across the bridge as my obelisk area. I'll be honest, I wasn't a big fan of how it was looking, but I'm sure creative inspiration will strike at some point or another. You hear that? That's the sweet sound of free labour. I mean, happy Junimos consenting to picking my strawberries for me. Speaking of sweet sounds, get a load of this. Disgusting, yet surprisingly satisfying. I had a problem to solve on day 245, and Robin was going to help me with that. I wanted my keg sheds closer to Grandpa's shed, so I didn't have to travel across the whole farm each time I wanted to use them. And I was just able to squeeze them in in front of the fruit cave, including a third and final keg shed. Later in the day, I found Blair wandering the market, where I gave her another carp. And afterwards, I tried to envision the perfect obelisk area. nothing was coming to me so I decided to call it in for an early night. I began day 246 up at Ridgeside, starting Sean's day a little earlier than he'd like with the birthday gift. And yes, the glitch door is now fixed, you're welcome by the way. Yay! Soon after I popped by Robin's to purchase some brazier crafting recipes. Someone please tell me why I have to go in and out of her shop to get the next ones. And one big final shed upgrade for my third keg shed. I felt bad that I hadn't given Blair a carp in a few days, so I remedied that by finding her while she was fishing to hand her one. Now that I had fresh beets thanks to my island farm, I was off to finish the mysterious Mr. Key quest by sneaking 10 of my beets into Lewis's fridge. The final step was in the desert, and uh, yeah, so, so Pam isn't, isn't driving the bus today. Damn it! 
So instead of doing that, I filled up the rest of my day with crab pot fishing and diving through the volcano dungeon for dragon teeth and magma sprite slaying. I rode Dusty through the rain on day 247 down to Andy's place. He's another hard NPC to please with gifts, so I went with the easy option of a rabbit's foot. Pam was back to driving the bus this morning, thank god, so I took a bus ride out to Calico Desert. While out there I planted and fertilized 50 acorns. That may seem like a lot, but the production of my oak resin back on the farm was, well, lackluster. Also I finished up the last step to Mr. Key's quest and received the club card back on the farm. But I didn't feel like gambling away my life savings today, instead I stood in the rain and smelted ores. That night however, I accidentally teleported myself to my nexus while riding Dusty. And after trying to teleport back again later, I somehow managed to glitch myself out and under the map. Or I'm just invisible. Either way, I can tick glitching myself out off my Stardew Valley bucket list. Thank goodness everything was back to normal on day 248. Feeling better that I wasn't stuck in some sort of purgatory, I began the day with a few chores around the farm, before heading off to the flower dance. Blair agreed to be my partner for the dance today. The flower dance is a lot more enjoyable when you don't get rejected. And in annual tradition, we danced in total silence. <laughs> I woke up to a field full of strawberries on day 249 and I'm very grateful for my little helpers that will pick them for me. With the key to the town I could now enter buildings at any time, but that certainly doesn't guarantee they'll sell me stuff earlier anyway, so I ran laps around Pierre's store to blow off some steam. I was here to buy a bouquet since I was going to ask someone special to be my girlfriend. Aww. Wasting no time I rode up to Ridgeside and found Blair fishing by the river, and I'm happy to say she accepted my bouquet, but then seemed upset and I've, I'm just getting some mixed, I'm getting some mixed signals here Blair. Either way I ran away before she could take her back. On my way to Ginger Island that afternoon I found my romantic companion down by the beach, where she had a little rant about how she never sees her dad, but wants to see him but kind of feels bad for her mum. Now I'm sensing a little baggage here. I thought I'd give her some space and headed back to the volcano dungeon to get my sprite slaying on, which is where I spent the rest of the day. Day 250 was upon us, and I woke up on the island as I didn't have time to make it home last night. I had a pretty chill morning actually. I gave Pierre a birthday gift, and finished filling the second keg shed with kegs. As the afternoon came though, I popped by Blair's place and got caught between her and Carmen having a heated argument. Blair ran out, so I chased after her like all good boyfriends would, and I found her sitting on the bridge overlooking the river. She seems to blame herself for her parents' divorce, and it sounds like her dad left without a word. In a klutzy moment we both fell into the river, which cleared away some of the tension in the air, and Blair and Carmen were able to make amends in a very heartwarming moment. Content with a happy ending, I headed back home, collected up another batch of ancient fruit wine, dumped it into the shipping bin, and got some sleep. I'm sure you know how day 251 started. And with that out of the way, I had some time to give Emily some wool for her birthday, and visit Magnus's tower where I finally met Morgan. Although I got them in trouble for using magic, technically I never asked though, so I'm gonna say that it wasn't my fault. Anyway, the reason I was here was to purchase my first two obelisks, the Earth Obelisk and the Water Obelisk. If you've never seen an obelisk before, they're just teleporters to different places around the valley. After picking some flowers at Sprite Spring and giving apples a star fruit just for funsies, I tried yet again to make some magic happen around my obelisks, but anything I tried turned into flaming poop. So I gave up and went to bed. Day 252 was the final day of spring, and to start the final day of spring I paid a visit up to Ridgeside. I caught Sonny before his daily job started and I handed him a birthday gift, and found Bert to give him a birthday gift too. Back on the farm I collected all the strawberries my Junimos had graciously picked, and hoped Lewis could pick hundreds of strawberries out of the shipping bin. As for the rest of the day, I honestly didn't get up to too much. We could talk about how I attempted a third time to decorate my obelisk area and failed, but I don't feel like it. So as Dusty and I watched the sun sink below the horizon from the comfort of my expansive orchard that evening, I readied myself for what the summer season would bring this year. Get your eggs out and cook them on the pavement cause it's summertime! I'd highly recommend cooking them in the pan though, just FYI. 
That's right, day 253 marks the first day of summer in our third year on the farm. And to start this wonderful day, I planted down some summer spangle seeds by my bee houses and a bunch of blueberries in my crop fields. Afterwards, I went in search of Briel and found him coming out of Blooming Hill Farm to hand him a birthday gift. As I left, I wondered if Jerick still wanted that best farm competition, as I think I'm going to obliterate him. Back on the farm that evening, I had to clean up a bit of the farm from the change of seasons and went to bed after a very successful first day of summer. Moving right along to day 254, it started back at Ridgeside waking Blair up with a stinky carp and hopping into bed with Freddy and Lola oh, yeah. to give Lola some mayonnaise as a birthday gift. I think the key to the town has really let me break boundaries with some people. Fearing the worst, I took a boat ride far, far away to the island of Ginger. My sweet gem berries had finished growing, so I collected them for a trapped soul quest, and my last monster crop had grown. Lance will be very pleased. That would have to wait though, as I was here to slay some more magma sprites. And with a bit of monster musk, I spent the day diving through the dungeon, putting my galaxy sword to work as I went, which is how I spent the rest of my day. Day 255 was a similar story. Lance seemed stoked to receive the monster crops. I visited the mountain ridge to collect some mist blooms I needed for the trap soul quest, tapped all of my oak trees in the desert, got distracted catching some butterflies while I was there too, planted some random seeds I hadn't planted with some more monster crops on my island farm, and headed back to the volcano dungeon for round 2 electric boogaloo with all of the magma sprites. But my hard work paid off because I ticked off the second to last monster slayer goal. Day 256 began with a quick warp to Sprite Spring to pick some flowers before finding Jazz at Marnie's ranch and handing her a fairy rose for her birthday. However, the metaphorical chef's hat came back out of retirement today, and all I did was whip up some stellar dishes that rival even the likes of Gordon Ramsay and Jamie Oliver, which uh, I did for the whole day. So we're moving on to day 257 I guess. Lance was waiting at my door this morning. He told me the monster crops were quite fascinating, and he hasn't stopped studying them. For my efforts, he left me a reward at the outpost. I'm sure I won't forget about this. Sometimes, as a Stardew Valley player, you need to keep organised, and for a lot of today, I spent it digging through my chests and doing a bit of reorganising. Also, with a grove of fruit, nut, and vegetable trees on my farm, I was running out of chest space. So, after a bit of thinking, rejigging, and moving things around, my brain could rest easy knowing everything was in order. As the night fell, I gathered up my weekly batch of wine, 450 bottles by the way, which I shipped away before bed. Day 258 began with the Ancient Fruit Harvest Ritual, and once that was over and the kegs were fermenting fruit again, I popped by Robins to commission the final upgrade for my farmhouse, and spent a cool 1 million gold for the island obelisk. I've been thinking, who gets that gold when I purchase these obelisks? Magnus? Lewis? The Junimos? I mean, we have to pay 10 million gold for a golden clock. Who's getting that gold, man? Money laundering aside, I paid a visit to the movie theatre for the first time and found poor Martin getting picked on by Pam. Considering it was his birthday, that was unfortunate. Today had flown by and I ended up bumming around the farm before calling it in for the night. I called upon the rain gods as soon as I woke up on day 259. Honestly, I can't remember why. I woke Blair up with another stale fish this morning and I am hoping she doesn't get cold feet as a result of my antics. That didn't seem likely though as soon after I found her before leaving the village where we danced our troubles away. Aww, isn't that just the cutest thing you've ever seen? With my mind giddy on love, it took me a bit to figure out what to do. But eventually that afternoon, I remembered about my crab pots in the mountain lake and went to restock them with bait. As for the rest of the day, I tended to my animals, picked some fruit and beef jerky from my orchard, and apples in return for a star fruit gave me a rock. I'm not making that up. He actually gave me a rock. But you can't be mad at that cute face now, can ya? I, no joke, stood waiting outside Gus's bedroom for half of day 260. Some people call it persistence. I call it pettiness. Also, I remembered why I needed it to rain today. Because I needed to buy a mermaid's pendant. That's right, people. Since the wizard couldn't teach me how to love, I found out how to do it all on my own. Aww. And I'm happy to report she said yes. I was a very happy boy. Afterwards, I circled by the ridge to collect the last of the mist blooms I needed to free the trap soul. All there was left to collect was the rubies. And uh, yeah, that's about it for today.
I found Olga the next morning on day 261 pottering around Nightingale Farm so that I could hand her a birthday gift before taking a bus ride out to the desert and spending the day back in the Skull Caverns. I was here for two reasons and two reasons only, rubies and serpents. It took a while but in the later hours of the day I picked up the final ruby I needed to collect for the trapped spirit. Not only that but I also slayed my final serpent soon after that and ticked off the final monster slayer goal. Carrying on to day 262, I found my slime hutch full of slime balls again. And god, it's just so grossly pleasing, I don't know what I'm doing. Over in town, I rode Dusty over to the museum to drop off a rusty cog I'd found yesterday and bought a bunch of grass from Pierre's before heading up to Robin's because it was Maru's birthday. And what better way to celebrate than with a big old juicy strawberry. Since I was there, I thought it would be fun to paint a few of my sheds and other buildings on the farm. Happy with the colours I'd chosen, I returned to the desert, this time to collect 50 oak resin from my forest of oak trees. I used the grass starter I'd bought earlier to invigorate my animal area since they had absolutely mowed through the grass this year. Once that had been sorted, I made my way back up to the mountain ridge. Yeah, for a bit of foraging, sure, but I really needed a few more spiritual essence for the ridgeside obelisk. So I was here for a while, just slaying monsters. However, I did stick around as the clock struck midnight. With everything collected, I was eager to see what was to come of the trapped greenhouse spirit. So I entered the greenhouse at midnight and was relieved to say that the spirit was now at peace. Veliss came by to tell me that the spirit was an old caretaker and that the hike trail greenhouse was now free for me to use. But it was past my bedtime, I think I'll have to solve that problem another day. Day 263 started with a trip through my nexus to Magnus's place so I could purchase the ridgeside obelisk. Yes it does look different from the others, you'll just have to put up with it like I had to. I'll admit today was a little less exciting than yesterday, but I did make some progress working on the obelisk area. I just ignore me accidentally teleporting myself to Ginger Island and I totally meant to do that. But I liked where this was going more than anything else I'd done so far, so I'll take that as a win. And to make life easier, I placed down two mini obelisks, one beside the farm point and the other below the obelisk, so it's all one easy network. But it was late and I was very proud of today's work, so I didn't mind showing off a little. It was the specialist of days on day 264 as it was mine and Blair's wedding day. Take that Rasmodius. After giving Faye a birthday gift I thought I'd celebrate our wedding day with a special treat for Blair. That being a date to the movies. Ha oh, I'm such a gentleman. But first I had to commission another shed to be built. Don't worry, don't worry there won't be any more kegs. This one is for crystallariums at some point in the near future. And then it was off to the movies with the newlyweds. I even got her a star cookie. We caught a screening of the Journey of the Prairie King movie. And I'm happy to say Blair loved both the movie and the cookie. After the movie finished I didn't have much to do so I fluffed around the farm waiting for my wine to be ready. Which by the evening it was so I collected it all up and dumped it into the shipping bin before hitting the hay. It's day 265 and once again it's a Saturday so there's really no surprises as to what I'm up to this morning. By the time I'd finished shoving the kegs full of ancient fruit again just over a third of my day was already gone. It takes a lot of hard work to be this rich. So with the rest of it I gave Kiara a birthday gift, purchased the fifth and final obelisk to my collection, played a beautiful mermaid melody to secure a few more golden walnuts, gave Alex a birthday gift and rode Dusty around the farm like a lost little puppy. What did I do on day 266? Well I spent the morning giving Flora a birthday gift and I parked Dusty by another stall and regretted everything. Oh, seriously, this is just hard to watch. The afternoon rolled around and I split the bottom section of the farm into two for decorating purposes later on and added some more grass around the obelisk area, all before hitting the hay early. It seems I wasn't very motivated today. But that's okay because over days 267 and 268 I found the motivation to go full on decorating maniac mode. With Blair now residing in the farmhouse I felt a little bad that I hadn't done any interior decorating. So I got to work making our dream home. And after hours and hours of work, okay maybe like half an hour real lifetime, it was done. I want to yell move that boss. Anyone get that from Extreme Makeover Home Edition? Anyone say that? No? No. Oh well. Anyway here's the house. 
We're on to funny number day, plus 200. I started this magnificent day by planting some tea saplings in my newly constructed tea room, before riding Dusty into town. Here I gave Sam a cactus fruit for his birthday, and I was going to play the claw machine to get some plushies for the kids room, but the claw machine hog was there. With that plan out the window I took a bus ride to the desert instead, so I could gather another round of oak resin. And now that I had kegs on my mind I had to pop into Clint's to purchase piles of ore to smelt into bars, and of course robins for a bunch of wood. I made sure to buy an excess of copper so that I could make another 12 furnaces, which will make the ore smelting process a little quicker. Speaking of, it's day 270, and after handing Kenneth a strawberry for his birthday, I spent all day ore smelting. It was kind of nice not to have anything on today, very relaxing. Luna, on the other hand, seemed to have a different idea of what relaxing meant. After saying my goodbyes to Blair for the day, I headed out into day 271. It began with some chores around the farm and handing out another birthday strawberry, this time for Demetrius. Afterwards I was able to put all of those bars I had smelted yesterday to good use, and filled up my final shed full of kegs. Now we wait for the money to start rolling in. I found myself back at Robin's shortly after to get a big shed upgrade for my crystallarium shed. I think I've just paid off Robin's mortgage with how much money I've spent there. Later that afternoon I used the same flooring from my obelisk area to decorate beside the farm warp. I just wanted my mini obelisks to feel special. I spent more time on this than I'd like to admit, but hey we got there and it looks great. And before calling it in for the night, I made my way around the keg sheds collecting up another batch of ancient fruit wine to ship off. No surprises, I was back to picking a sea of ancient fruit yet again on day 272. After that had been sorted, I hauled the load of geodes I had been hoarding over to Clint's to watch him smack them all open. You'd think I would have done this much earlier, but I guess not. Gunther then probably pooped his pants seeing how many donations were coming in. And trust me, there were a lot. Sticking with the decorating theme that evening, I put aside some time to decorate outside the crystallarium shed. I kept it within the same theme of the rest of the farm and it turned out quite nice actually. Gunther was outside my door the morning of day 273. Apparently all of my donations made a lot of people happy. He said I'd be getting a cut of a donation made by the regional secretary of artifacts to the museum. I'll happily take that, even though Clint did most of the hard work. The first thing I did today was pay the sewers a quick visit, and I bought a few recipes from our old pal Krobus. Afterwards I circled up to Robin's, where I paid for Maru's college funds in return for a few stacks of stone. This was so I could make my first lot of crystallariums. I'm gonna fill them with jade stones since you can trade it with the desert trader for staircases, and they will be a big help for some of the key quests we may get later on. But for now it was a good start. I was on my way to Ridgeside that afternoon when Naomi suddenly grabbed me and took me back down the cable car. I think she may have a slight fear of heights. So Ridgeside was a great pick for you Naomi. I was here to make a start on using the hike trail greenhouse, and once that was done, well I mooched around the farm for the rest of the night. I had a spectacular start to my day on day 274. Blair gave me a star drop and I think I only have one left to get now. Not to mention that donation Gunther mentioned yesterday came in the mail too. As they say, it's all downhill from here. I finished getting the hike trail greenhouse ready for crops before making use of the community day. I handed out a bunch of small quest items I had been neglecting for the past two and a half years. But hey I'm finally getting round to them. After the final item was given out I made a quick warp stop to the island farm to collect my monster crops, shrub and ancient fiber that had grown for me to ship off for the shipping collection. All before bedtime. I found Gus on my doorstep the morning of day 275, and after comparing making a new source to me arriving in the valley, he handed over a mini jukebox and the recipe to craft more. Uh, thanks? I rode into town shortly afterwards where I handed Victor a birthday gift and headed down to the beach. I did a bit of foraging and caught myself the legendary crimson fish. All I could do was add it to my massive fish tank. Yay! The machine hog had vanished from the movie theater claw machine, so I had some fun picking up and collecting tiny Junimo plushies. All so I could decorate the kids room. Oh yeah, guess what I used the hike trail greenhouse for? Meat plants! 
<laughs> yeah, you heard me right. Someone has figured out how to grow meat and I'll be forever nicknaming this greenhouse the meat house. And I don't care how weird it is. At least it's better than slicing my chickens up. As for the rest of the day, I can't say all that much happened to be honest. It was Willie's birthday on day 276, so I walked my way over to the beach to hand him a pumpkin, only to realise I didn't have Dusty with me. My stupidity astounds me sometimes. Moving on, I paid a visit to the desert and traded a stack of Omni Geodes for some artifact troves with the desert trader. I then got Clint to open 64 of them. And after a long time watching items pop up, I got to donate a bunch of artifacts I hadn't donated yet to the museum. Everything else I stored away back on the farm just in case. As for the rest of the day, well I'm stoked to say I spent it over on Ginger Island recording another episode of your favourite segment of all time, Panning! With Proxio! Yet again, I was crossing my fingers that I was to get another haul of lucky rings, but it seems no one was listening to me today, and I came away with none. But that's okay because it's a three day special episode! That's right, I continued to spend both day 277 and 278 panning with Proxio! And to think it would be written in the stars to say that I would at least get one more ring to add to our tally. Yet, it seems that my luck ran out the day I got three, and I'm sorry to report that we came away with a total of zero. However, we can't neglect the loot we got anyway, which I guess is a nice compensation. That puts us on to day 279, which was a bit of a catch up day. It's like I run a farm or something. After the weekly ancient fruit was picked and re-kegged, I found Malaya at the museum in town to hand her some ridge berries for her birthday, and I tended to the farm, like collecting jade stone, oak resin and pine tar from the tree farm, batteries from the storm a couple of days ago, and making the most of my animal produce machines again. To finish the day off I collected a mountain of blueberries that my Junimos had been farming for me the whole season, wished Lewis good luck as I dumped them into the shipping bin, and headed to sleep. Day 280 marks the final day of summer. For some reason I decided to visit Harvey's for the first time in this playthrough and found he sells another tree sapling and aloe pods. Oh. Luckily I could fit the eucalyptus tree in, the aloe pods I just grew on the island farm. Back in town I passed by Piers to buy more meat seeds. Yes, this is just as weird to say as it is to hear. But hey I need the meat for all sorts so it's worth investing in. In all honesty there wasn't much left to do today except waste the time away until tonight. Festival. And in no time at all, I found myself on the pier with Blair. Sea salt in the air, I swear, not in despair. I'm so sorry, just, just play the song. Watch out for that ledge, cause you might fall. <laughs> oh, I crack myself up. It's day 281 and the first day of my favourite season of all time. To start the day off I rode Dusty up to Ridgeside where I helped Kiara choose a wallpaper design that she's making for one of her clients and handed Lorenzo a birthday gift. I also picked beef and bison meat out of the meat house and replaced them with chevron and chicken seeds. What an odd experience. Back down in the valley I scythed away all of my dead blueberry plants and replaced them with a load of cranberry seeds before making a quick trip to Ginger Island to whack some weeds and have a look at Mr. Key's quests for the week. But none looked appealing to me, so I decided to skip it, and that's about all that happened today. So it's on to day 282. We had another double birthday today. I gave Zane a dino egg, cause he's fancy like that, and Penny a poppy. On my way back home, I popped into Pierre's to have a browse, only to realise I think there's some trees I haven't planted yet. Which were a camphor leaf tree and an avocado tree. Luckily I was able to find some spare room in the orchard for both trees. That afternoon I went on a mini adventure back to the highlands as I had a couple of things left there for me to do. The first was to slay some of these green mushrooms for a green mushroom drop, as I'll need to ship one of these for the shipping collection. Second, I made my way back through the cave system to the pool of water on the other side so that I could catch a gemfish. And lastly, to collect my reward from Lance, a magic wand. <laughs> which teleports enemies back when you hit them. Very cool. Day 283 began with, would you believe it, another birthday. 
who would have guessed it? After giving Richard his birthday present, I paid a quick visit to Sprite Spring to pick some seasonal flowers before heading off to catch myself another legendary fish. It took me a while to hook one, but after a bit of time I was able to catch the angler, and I added it to my fish tank in the farmhouse. As for the rest of the day, I found myself pottering around the farm, adding more grass to the animal area, picking produce from the orchard, and riding Dusty around. I really enjoyed my cable car ride up to Ridgeside the morning of day 284, because I had two more frickin' birthday presents to give out. God, I swear it's never ending, man. First on my list was Yuma, apologies for the early wake up call, and second was Aria. I then bumped into Pippo and Acorn accompanied by a new character who went by the name of Sari. This is a long cutscene so let me sum it up real quick. Pippo is Sari's son, they're on a journey to find a missing person. Andrea shows up, they all start bowing to her. They all have pointy ears like Andrea. We go into her hideaway. Turns out she's the long lost princess to the elven kingdom of Verd. She seems to have Stockholm syndrome and understandably so, she says she'll think about returning home. Uh, uh, I'm s I'm sorry, what, what just happened? So Andrea is a long lost princess? Oh man, this is all too much even for me. So I thought I'd take a relaxing trip out to the desert, only to find Sandy had been hiding six tree saplings and flower seeds from me this whole time. Oh. Or I didn't think to scroll downwards, but nonetheless, shocking stuff. Before I could deal with the saplings, I picked my aloe and planted the flower seeds down on Ginger Island, and got to thinking about where I'd put these new seeds. I had the solution to extend the orchard space just below the crop fields and planted them here. I'll decorate it once they're finished growing. And after a full day of twists and turns, I was happy to go to bed that night. It was cutscene galore the morning of day 285, so I will do that thing where I sum it up, but only doing so using three words per situation. <coughs> Gave Kimpoi bok choy. Kimpoi anxious socially. Maddie being mean. Mr. Agua wizard. Lorenzo has fun. Lenny tells story. Fix new greenhouse. Isabel in trouble. Brial worried. Assassins? Gave Elliot feather. Fished up disappointment. Collected wine, yay. Shipped wine off. Sleepy time now. Okay, I promise I'll never do that again. It's day 286 and it was back to the ancient fruit picking grind today. Look people, I need a golden clock at some point and this bad boy is 10 million gold so you're gonna have to put up with this for a bit longer. After that was done, I put myself back a casual 2 million gold to get myself the return scepter from Krobus. This magical staff lets you teleport home from anywhere and is going to make a nice addition to my arsenal of warp devices. Not too much happened for the rest of the day actually. I did add a couple more fish chests to the kitchen and organised it a bit, but that was about it. Using my nexus I paid Morgan a visit the morning of day 287 to give them a birthday present, before trading 120 jade stone for 120 staircases. I was a bit lost on what to do for the next while, until I remembered I wanted to enchant my sword up at the forge, so I infused 3 rubies into my galaxy sword increasing its overall damage, and after buying 800 bombs from the dwarf, I headed to bed. Now you may be wondering, Poxil, that's an absurd amount of bombs. Well, let me just sum up the next three days. Skull Cavern, Skull Cavern, Skull Cavern. Okay, well, other things did happen. I completed a key quest which gave me 40 key gems. I got to level 100 in the caverns on day 288, and Mr. Key increased my overall health with some foul tasting iridium snake milk. I got my third auto petter the day after. And after three days of diving down the caverns, I managed to yoink a total of 954 iridium ore, 11 prismatic shards, and a hell of a lot of stone, copper, iron, and gold. Safe to say, my mining chest was looking pretty healthy. Which must put us on to day 291. I was happy to get away from the dusty caverns today and spend some time above ground. Over in town I gave Jody a birthday present and donated off one of my mini prismatic shards to the museum, before paying a visit to the meat house so I could pick some chicken and plant a bunch of turkey seeds, and then pick some chevron and replace that with some duck seeds, and then I picked alpaca meat which I then replaced with frog meat seeds. And then I picked beast meat, which I replaced with bird meat seeds. I have no further comments. 
I then spent the day fishing. I caught a kitty fish and a puppy fish off of Shearwater Bridge and then an ice pip down in the mines. I continued to fish on day 292 where I sought out fish to add to my fishing collections tab, including a void eel from the Witch's Swamp, a snatcher worm from the Mutant Buglier, a shiny Lunaloo from the ocean on Ginger Island, and collected up my ancient fruit wine, but that goes without saying. We're skipping this part too. Day 293 I got to present Abigail with a pumpkin for her birthday before relocating my crab pots down to the ocean. Now that I had sufficient snails, crayfish and periwinkles back home, I wanted to catch some ocean critters. Day 294 I gave Ian a strawberry for his birthday. Then I found him on the steps leading to Ridgeside. I found out he has trouble spelling and I hope I can help him learn one day. And then it was back to fishing. This time I stationed myself at the Ridge Falls and caught some beautiful new fish like a Ridge Bluegill, a Golden Rose Fin and a fairy tail Lionfish. I let off some steam on day 295 waiting for Sandy to open her shop. Or I'm just going insane! Either way I got to give Sandy a crocus flower for her birthday before paying a visit to the island farm to pick some flowers I'd grown. And I picked up the four precious stones quest for the third time. Come on Key, mix it up a little bit. One quick stop back home meant I could store some flowers away and return to Key with four shards, which gave me another 40 Key gems. I had quite the haul now so I spent them on a horse flute and a couple of Junimo chests. The chests I placed down on both farms and the horse flute lets me summon Dusty anywhere at any time. Now that is very cool. That afternoon I made 24 more crystallariums which I placed down in my shed, planted some pineapple seeds and rice shoots down on the island farm, and put honey, wheat and hops into kegs I made to make mead, beer and pale ale. I had a nightmare on day 296, I was revamping the sheds with torches and spicing them up with flooring and walls, you know, to give it some more pizzazz. But I accidentally trashed my catalogue by accident, so of course I went into town to get another one from Piers, only to forget it's the Valley Fair today. Ah, I'm, I'm writing this day off for sure. Day 297 I decided to do a bit of gambling at the casino. That club card I'd gotten a while ago blasts away the bouncer in the way of entering the casino. I hit up the slot machine and hoped with good daily luck, the lucky ring, the lucky charm and a plus two luck bonus from a dewberry would provide a jackpot for me. I didn't quite hit the jackpot but I did get 3 shells, which gave me more than enough tokens to buy the last rare crow I needed, which I placed back down on the farm. And then I made some more weird machines, which I reorganised, kind of, oh, I'll, fi I'll figure them out at some point. Day 298 I gave Marnie a birthday present, planted some bee balm seeds down on the island farm, finally replanted another mango tree on the farm after whacking it down about 90 days ago, and spent 9 prismatic shards to try and get the archaeologist trait on my hoe. But I didn't get it. Sometimes I just can't win with this game. God I hate- Day 299 I literally did nothing and here we finally are on day 300. As is tradition in all of my 100 days videos I spend the final day soaking in the spa and reflecting on the last 100 days. Safe to say it's been another big adventure. We'd freed a trapped soul, we're on the brink of opening the spirit realm and cleansing the ridge of corruption and we finally found true love. You may be wondering what is to come in the next 400 days. Well for that my friends, you'll just have to wait until next time. Also before we finish, a UFO! Well there you have it everyone, that has been 300 days of mega modded Stardew Valley. Here's a look at the farm thus far, it is certainly an upgrade from this time last year. If you have made it this far then I just wanted to say thank you, and if you did enjoy then I'd appreciate you liking the video and subscribing to the channel. I'm so excited to continue our adventures in the next video, but for now all I can say is, you're all wonderful people so have a wonderful day, and thanks for watching!